One key warning sign for a cult is that they have a leader who tells everyone what to do. <laughs> yeah. Do you tell people what to do? Yeah, and they never listen. <laughs> no, no, it's not like that at all. And yes, I, I agree for, for a start that um, any, any leader who tells other people what to do or bosses them around in their personal life in particular, obviously that's not a good sign that that, that leader has their has a good intention or a pure heart. Mm -hmm. And we don't do that at all. In fact, in fact, in fact, the majority of people who come to us complain that we don't do it enough yeah. <laughs> because they want, uh, many times people want somebody to tell them what to do because they're not willing to work through their own life and work through the, you know, what they want to do with their life and nor do they want to take responsibility for their life. So, so a lot of people are very attra attracted to other people or a book telling them what to do. Mm -hmm. So I find this definition of being a, a cult leader quite interesting because it's really saying that anybody who believes in the Bible is a member of the cult because the book tells you things to do, mm -hmm. gives you commandments that you must follow. And therefore, under this definition of a cult, then any person who practices anything that the Bible teaches would be a member of a cult. Mm. And then if you look at uh, other organisations, you know, for example, almost every pleasure-based organisation, you know, like club or, or has, a, has a set of rules yeah. where people tell you what to do. So that means they are a cult too now, does it? <laughs> so, so I do agree that many of the organisations on the earth have been set up right from the family onward where they have a lot of rules that they then, that they then enforce. Mm -hmm. uh, and oftentimes it's our parents that started to enforce these particular things. And then, of course, it, it turned into enforcement by an organisation, some kind of, per, you know, entity that doesn't have a, any real personality to it because it's a conglomeration of people and it yeah. turns into an organisation. And then the organisation enforces its own rules. And I disagree with all of such things. I feel the only rules that need to be enforced, if you could say enforced, are the rules associated with love. And the way they're enforced is by just God's laws already enforce them. Yeah. Like the uni God's universe already enforces these laws of love. And the way God enforces laws is very gently. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an operation that occurs upon your soul and you will be corrected every single time. So the question was, do I tell people what to do? No, I don't. I do give suggestions to people when they ask me. Mm -hmm. So if a person says to me, you know, how do you think I should deal with this particular problem in my family? Well, I'll say, well, what, was love, what does love dictate you do here yeah. in this particular situation? And if a person comes to and asks me, what should I do with my work? Well, what would love of yourself dictate you do with your work? And what would love of your environment dictate you do with your work? And what would love of the people who are at work dictate what you do mm -hmm. at work? Mm -hmm. But in the end, every person must make their own choice and decision. And I am not responsible for anyone's decisions and I have no desire to be responsible for anyone's decisions at all because I feel most people's decisions are not based around love and unfortunately based around other things. And I certainly wouldn't want to be responsible for any of their decisions as a result. So, so we don't tell people what to do ever, as you know. Yeah. A lot of people would like us to, but of course we avoid doing such a thing. But we do give suggestions about what love would do. And certainly... I know we both come from this approach, but what I notice you doing is that you encourage people to understand that they have the gift of choice mm. and the gift of will. Mm. And when it comes to tackling a situation in their life, while you may discuss what love would do, you're always very certain to emphasise that it's the person's responsibility to make that decision mm. and that they do have choices and that they're allowed to make choices. And not only that, that when they do make a choice, God's laws have, a, have certain effects upon their soul, depending on the type of choice they make. So, so I just tell them the truth about the way God's laws work and the way that you know, God has created these laws all surrounding the issues of love and the use of your will and truth and so forth. And, and once I tell them those truths, many people then feel like they are being pushed into a certain direction. Mm -hmm. But I feel that's because they are now feeling guilty about their own feelings of making their own choices. A person who truly wants to love 
would be totally open to any concept regarding love and totally desirous of following those concepts if they really wanted to. So, but we don't enforce any of those things. We just encourage people to be more loving in their day-to-day -day life. And we certainly don't tell people what to do because it's, honestly, most people wouldn't do what I told them to do anyway. Mm -hmm. I do what I tell myself to do. That's the only person in my life <laughs> that gets told what to do, me, by myself. <laughs> and I don't even tell you what to do, as you know. No, that's very true. Mm. And how do you deal with someone who, after you've had a discussion with them about what love would do, do you withdraw love from those people or not withdraw your friendship from those people? Not at all. If they um, make a choice that's not in harmony with Yeah, them? not at all. My love and friendship is, a, is available to all. However... Uh, if that person decides to treat me harmfully, well, in other words, they become very angry about my statements about what love would do and they get all upset because they're not doing it and they don't want to or whatever, and then they become very angry with me about that. Well, then I, I, I then say to the person, well, you're now no longer being loving to me mm -hmm. and I don't like that and I don't want to put up with that from you, so I'm not going to see you and while you're being unloving to me. Yeah. And so, yes, there are many times when I've said to people, no, you can't come along to one of my seminars anymore because you're being unloving to me and that's my right it's my seminar I'm mm. allowed to do what I like with it mm. and that's not controlling a person there's still like every single thing that we do gets placed on the internet for free they could go along to every seminar just by watching what's on the internet if they wanted to yep. so so it's not like they're being prevented from receiving more truth if they really wanted it they're just being prevented from treating me badly yeah. and I don't agree with anybody treating me badly just like I don't agree with myself treating anybody else badly yeah Thanks. <laughs>